Ah yes, welcome to my new series on Germany's colonial possessions in Africa. <laughs> so get your licensed Maxim machine guns and bottles of Africa Coca-Cola ready! Because I have depleted my resources of false happiness for today. Anyway, German East Africa, or Deutsch Ostafrika, came to be because of the outcry of German people to expand the empire's influence to other parts of the world and obtain exotic goods. Keep in mind that the first large-scale imports of bananas and the following widespread recognition of them by the German public occurred several years after the colony was established in... Well, that's just the point. There wasn't an official planting of the flag by the government saying, This is all ours now, in all of its entirety. No. Instead, it happened in the time between 1884 and 1885, when an utter bastard, Karl Peters... Karl Peters, uh liebte es sein Gegenüber zu fragen, haben sie schon mal einen Neger getötet? The man with blood covered hands. Prähistorischen Nazi. Set foot on the sands of Sardani, which is here, on the 10th of November 1884, on a mission to convince the Sultan of Zanzibar to let go of his holdings on the East African coast in the name of the mainly by him founded German East Africa Company, Deutsche Ostafrika Gesellschaft, DOAG. He planned to do this by showing the salt in German contracts of protection signed by the local tribe leaders who had no knowledge of the German language, and were both intoxicated and intimidated by Karl in order to sign them. As I said, an utter bastard. Uh, schon als neuer Napoleon in Cairo einmarschieren. When his mission ended just 37 days later, and he arrived in February of 1885 back in Berlin, God's present to the German people and then Reichskanzler Otto von Bismarck just laughed at the contracts calling him nothing more than Pieces of paper with Negro crosses on them. Which according to him would open the gates for despotism. Peters wird 1891 zum Reichskommissar im Kilimanjaro Gebiet ernannt. Dort regiert er wie ein absolutistischer Fürst. Raubbau, pick one of the translations for that one, they're equally horrible. And exploitation. Und obwohl die Afrikaner, wie er sagt, Untermenschen für ihn sind, erlegt er ihren Reiz. As I said. Bismarck was a not politically correct godsend and genius. Such was the mind that would use Europe for a chessboard. Vorwärts. Nein. But what would actually persuade him to invest into the colony was that Herr Peters then actually threatened to sell the land to Leopold II of Belgium, who was busy at the time setting up the Congo Free State, a supposed philanthropic venture of his. Bismarck sent the proposal to Kaiser Wilhelm I, who signed it along with Bismarck on February 27th of 1885. So cool. Thus establishing the colony under the name German East Africa, instead of the by Peter's friend suggested name Petersland. <laughs> Thank God we didn't end up with that one. By then everything was finally ready to begin the colonizer. <laughs> Actually it wasn't! Because there was a small dispute with the Sultan, you know, nothing major. <laughs> Just something about, about obtaining the hinterland of, of his possessions and... <laughs> nothing big was undertaken, not something like five warships being sent carrying big sticks. And because we, uh, I mean the Germans, handled this so humanely and hippie peace loving... So cool. Everything went fine and everything was quiet after that. That was until the natives revolted four years later, for also humane and politically correct economic reasons. Yeah. But alas, the conflict was resolved by a long staring contest, and the imperial government building up a force of Sugundis and Zulu mercenaries, Ascari and a bit of the Royal Navy, <laughs> quenched the revolt. Nah, nah, nah. And this revolt was definitely not led by a guy named Abushiri. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. So don't look it up. Oh wait. You know what also happened? The Helgoland Zanzibar Conference of 1890. Or in German, Der Vertrag zwischen dem Deutschen Reich und dem Vereinigten Königreich über die Kolonien und Helgoland. <coughs> which ceded the beautiful island of Helgoland, or Heligoland, on which I have occasion two times already, to Germany. You know, because it was literally in front of our coast. 
And also, it finalized the rough borders of the colony. Finally. And now the colonization can get started. Around that time, the building of railways, cash crop, rubber, cotton, and coffee plantations, post offices, government buildings, schools, churches, telegraph and schnürchen, and general infrastructure commenced. And the colony really got going. Mind a few native revolts. Who cares about that, really? <laughs> A lot of the initial struggle in building up the colony was to push against the Arabs in their slave trade. As mentioned, this caused the first revolt in the colony, and brought the Africa researcher and then appointed Reichskommissar Hermann von Wismann into the picture, who along with Lothar von Trotha, joined the ranks of German people with really dumb rhyming names acting controversially in Africa. First, he used ruthless scorched earth tactics in the war against the Arabs and revolting Swahili natives, allowed the plundering of various cities and villages, and dealt harshly with the leaders of the revolt, calling them nothing but dirty slave traders and ringleaders. Now naturally, that turned him into quite the controversial character. The German ambassador to Zanzibar, for example, called his rule nothing more than a military dictatorship, while people like Field Marshal Helmut von Moltke called him an outstanding guy who, quote, acted tough down there and hanged the villains. This is absolute mad, lad. So you could say that he was quite a divisive figure. Why am I feeling like Indy Lydell right now? Hmm. Hi, this is Indy Lydell. Yo, Go boy. fuck yourself. Maybe I'll do a bio special on him later. Uh, von Wismann, not, not Indy Lydell. Anyway, he would later be given a memorial in Dar es Salaam of him commanding an Askari covering a dead line with the German flag. That statue was located in the place where now a monument to the Askaris fighting for the British Empire in World War I stands. And while this man's statue has a pretty interesting anecdote attached to it, that involves there now standing another statue in its place, Controversy. and a few blown up Bismarck memorials. From a little spark, they burst a flame. Time to go. The fact that there even is a plaza there, now, is just a testament to the fact that, at least in my humble opinion, in terms of infrastructure, educational, linguistical and general development, Germany was instrumental in laying the groundwork for the Tanzanian state that exists today. They created the education system. The Die Deutschen haben die Sprache wissenschaftlich untersucht, ihr eine Grammatik gegeben und sie so für alle erlernbar gemacht. Sehen Sie, die Deutschen haben uns eine Sprache gegeben, mit der wir uns endlich unterhalten konnten. Erst daraus entwickelte sich eine gemeinsame Identität. Man begriff sich als Nation und als gemeinsames Volk. Das war eine große Leistung. But of course, none of this came without cost. In the late 1890s and early 1900s, policies enforced by Peters to erect previously mentioned farms and have them produced to quotas led to large-scale native dissatisfaction and the Maji Maji Aufstand, which in turn would lead to multiple hundreds of thousands of deaths on the native side. And while I could make fun of their standpoint in the machine gun versus magic water debate, and will, Ach, what a gun, I'm defeated! I, in turn, believe that it's important to recognize the efforts of the Reichstag to improve the quality of life for the natives and reform colonial policies in order to prevent such atrocities from happening again in the future. Nachdem man jahrelang mit Zerstörungsmitteln gearbeitet habe, müsse man jetzt mit Erhaltungsmitteln arbeiten. Afrikaner sollten selbst an der Produktion teilnehmen, sie sollten auch an der Produktion verdienen. Die medizinische Versorgung soll die Einheimischen für die Errungenschaften der abendländischen Zivilisation gewinnen. Wenn wir nur zehn Jahre länger unter der deutschen Verwaltung gelebt hätten, wären wir heute vielleicht ein anderes Land. Aber vielleicht wäre Tansania heute in seiner Entwicklung auf einem ganz anderen Level. All of which leads me to say that while I personally condemn people like Karl Peters, I do not think that German colonization efforts were in vain or somehow inherently wrong. And if you assign a different weight to the events talked about in this video than I did, I'd still say that these events are ones that put shame on Germany's shoulders, that outweigh the good it done. Even then I'd say if you would believe you in saying that Germany was by far the worst colonial power in Africa.
Not looking at anyone specifically, since the one I mean might still hold German lands, but mm -hmm. They were taught that these black natives were animals and not fully human like them. After a while, these men, they became desensitized to the killing. Some of these soldiers would gut people and pull out their entrails or slice off a group of men's genitalia, only to hang them in a row. Some of the governor generals wrote letters to King Leopold II about these scenes because they were actually proud of their brutality. They believed that the worse they treated the Congolese people, the harder they worked. Uh, looks like I was wrong about them being there for banana waffles. But those are just my two East African rupees on the subject. But those aren't actually rupees, but that's just a game. I personally like German Southwest more, but I thought I might as well talk about its bigger brother first. Mostly because the government still hasn't apologized for the Herero massacre, and now the Africans are jumping on the anti-German hype train that the US still keeps around in its backyard and- I hope you liked this video. It took me a long time to make it. If you really want to know how, to, how it, the colony actually ended, I encourage you to watch the video about the colony on the Great Wars channel. It was, it was the main reason why it didn't feature, you know, the First World War or anything in this video. And it did sort of give a general outlook on how the colony was founded and how it went for the Great War. And don't forget to take a minute to consider whether or not you want to like it and share it. I hope you stick around. Thanks. <laughs> hey look, I found something funny. Simon Frogsler. Whacked, 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 whacked. <laughs> My autistic insensitivity knows no bounds. After a while, these men, they became desensitized to the killing.